Hello, this is Justin Heyer with LongRangeOnly.com. Today we're going to take a look at the field review of the Sig Tangle 6 3 to 18. So stick around and see what features it has to offer. When I found out I'd be reviewing the Sig Tango 6, I decided to hop online and look at some of the specs to figure out what I would be getting. The spec sheet on the Sig website was not very helpful, so as soon as I got the scope I decided to get some quick information. It does come with a 34mm tube. I believe the earlier versions or some of the earlier versions of the Tango 6 came with a 30mm, but the current versions have 34mm tubes. It's 12 and a half inches long. It weighs 37 and a half ounces. It comes in a couple of different reticle options. There's a MOA and MRAD milling reticle is what they refer to it as, pretty standard with stadia on the vertical and horizontal crosshairs, as well as an MOA and MRAD version of a Christmas tree style reticle for the shooters that prefer that. It's available, currently I believe it's only available in the graphite gray color that they have. It's a really sharp looking scope. It's different. It's instantly recognizable as a SIG. So if that's something you want, I definitely have grown to like the look of it as it sits on top of my rifles. My sample has 99 minutes of available elevation, so it has plenty of elevation to dial for those long shots, especially for an 18 power scope. Overall, the first impressions out of the box is that this is a solid scope. It had decent filling turrets, the glass looked good, I liked the reticle, I was excited to put it to some use as we'll see in the following clips. I was pretty pleased with the performance of this scope after a thorough field review. Here we have a clay pigeon at about 100 yards. I'm on three power. You can see that the center crosshairs are just barely visible. They're a little bit better in, the, in real life than on the camera. But as we go ahead and zoom in, you'll see it starts to get noticeable about right here around seven power. You can really start to pick up the crosshairs. As you continue to go in, those stadia become a little more visible and the center dot shows up as well. You can see it now that I've kind of moved over onto the clay pigeon. When I first picked up the scope, I was a little worried about the reticle. It's a little thicker than what I'm used to. I'm used to shooting a first focal plane reticle with roughly an eighth minute thick crosshair or an eight and an eighth minute floating dot. And this one's, you know, closer to a quarter minute, it's 0.2 MOA. So it's almost twice as thick as what I'm used to, but in practice, it was not a problem at all. I used it to shoot at rock chucks at 1300 yards. It did not cover up too much of the target. It was absolutely wonderful to use. That floating dot really helps save it and give it you know, the appearance that you're not covering up quite so much. As you dial back down to three power, as you could see in the, in the previous clip, it's not super usable. You're definitely gonna wanna turn on the illumination. The entire, you know, all the stadia part will light up when it's illuminated, which makes it very easy to see. But without the illumination, making a shot in close quarters, that scope's probably not the best choice. However, I haven't had a chance to try it out so maybe those thicker crossbars at the closer ranges won't matter. It'll, it'll be able to center it up just fine. But overall, the reticle's awesome. I could not be more pleased for a 3 to 18 power scope with the first focal plane. It's pretty much exactly what I would ask for. Here we have a demonstration of the SIG level plex. I'm currently on 18 power. I'm shooting this through my cell phone with a rigged up adapter so the picture quality is probably not excellent but hopefully you get the idea. So I'm going to go ahead and turn the level plex on with the push of the parallax knob and now you can see by the flashing red arrow that I need to tilt my rifle up on the right hand side. As I do that the light will turn off. If I tilt too far to the left hand side it tells me to go back again. So you can kind of play between those two settings and anywhere in between there they deem that it's level enough. It's a really handy feature if you remember to turn it on. That little flashing light really draws your attention helps you uh, level up. I noticed it especially helped me on rock chucks as I was using it this year. That was one of the things I kind of forget to do sometimes after a shot or two I don't necessarily check my level and this makes it pretty easy to do.
Let's go ahead and talk about the turrets on the SIG. I love these turrets. This particular scope was to, went to show, show as a demo model. It also went to some other trade shows. I don't know how many times the turrets have been spun, but it's a lot. And they still function great. You pull it up to release the locking mechanism, and you're able to dial. They're very audible. They're very crisp. You get 30 minutes per revolution. You have a rev indicator. You're able to dial back to zero. And with a zero stop, it stops right on zero. Push it back down, and you lock them. Your windage turrets feature the same locking feature, so you never have to worry about them getting knocked off, either sliding it in and out of a scabbard or your backpack or just hiking through the woods. You have a standard parallax knob on the side. Your illumination controls are the outside of that knob, and you push the whole knob to turn on the level plex. Overall, I love the feature set of this scope with the turrets. The turrets have dialed great. They dialed exactly what I could measure in the reticle. My dope lined up all the way out to 1,300 plus yards with my previous data that I'd collected with my collis. So it's right there. If, if there's any turret inaccuracies, I can't shoot well enough to show them. I just really like them. The more I use them, the more I like them. They're a great, great turret. The SIG comes with a fast focus diopter. You simply spin that outer ocular lens to get it until it's in focus for your eyes. There's a little green dot on the top of it that helps you remember where you were at. The magnification ring is nice and smooth. As you dial it around, there's two fiber optics to help you see where you're at. It's very smooth. It's not too easy to turn, but not too hard pretty nice. I especially like it. It's got just enough grip you can just grab it and spin. You, you don't need a throw lever to get your magnification changed. I've had the SIG Tango 6 now for four or five months. I've had a lot of chances to use it in the field. I've taken it on a few rock chuck hunts. I've shot some steel. I've shot paper targets. Overall I'm really impressed with this scope. The glass quality is better than I was expecting. It's very clear. It's very bright for a 44 millimeter objective. It held its own against my collis and resolution at the range. It had good enough contrast. I was able to shoot at some difficult to see rock chucks, you know, in excess of a thousand yards. I really enjoyed the turrets. Once I got used to having pop up turrets, I really liked them. The 30 minutes per revolution was awesome. You know, overall, I really enjoyed the scope. About my only complaint would be the weight, but if you understand that you're getting a heavy scope, you won't be disappointed. The reticle has surpassed my expectations even though I was initially worried. Overall, I highly recommend you give the SIG Tango 6 a look if you're in the market for a new scope in that $2,000 price range. I've really been impressed with mine.